Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you a tool called Crack Map Exec. Now, this is a very versatile tool that I use on pretty much any penetration testing engagement that I go on. So that's anything from a simple internal infrastructure assessment, all the way to the more advanced kind of red teamy scenario type, type engagements. Um, so firstly, how do you get Crack Map Exec? Well, like any or most tools, you get it from GitHub. Uh, so you can compile it from source using Python, or you can do the easier version, which I like, which is apt get install crack map exec. And you can do that on Kali, Ubuntu, Debian, and you know all your mainstream flavors of Linux. Um, so once you've got that installed, which I already have, uh, you can start using it. So you simply put in crack map exec when you app get install it, and there you are, you start using it. So what is it? Well, it's a tool for talking to different protocols. So SMB, SSH, HTTP, for example. Uh, the main thing I use it for is the SMB. So this is when you want to communicate with Windows hosts. And that's what I've got. So this is my CaliBox Crack Map Exec installed. And here is my Windows 10 host, which is going to act as the kind of attacker machine. Or sorry, being a machine being attacked. Um, so typically when you go into a client network, <coughs> excuse me, or... Um, you know, you want to be malicious and attack some sort of network, which I don't recommend, you're typically going to see Windows machines, whether it's one or a hundred. Crack Map Exec is great for talking to these machines. The first thing I'm going to show you is why I use it for troubleshooting on internal infrastructure assessments. So usually on an internal infrastructure assessment, you're probably going to be running Nessus. So Nessus works by communicating to a Windows host if you're using Windows, uh, using SMB. So a typical problem that you're gonna find on a Windows host is it won't actually allow you to talk to it using SMB. So if I show you here, uh, so the command is crack map exec SMB because you're using SMB, uh, and then you wanna be popping in the IP address, which for my Windows 10 lab is 99.128, 99.128. So if you run that, boom, it's gonna find that's a Windows 10 machine. So to troubleshoot, if you do dash dash shares, actually firstly you're gonna to wanna to put in a, a legitimate username. Uh, so for me that is El Jefe, and the password, which is my super secure password, a password one, two, three, boom. You will see that the admin and C dollar shares don't have any permissions. Now that is an issue. <clears throat> Now the reason that is happening, and that is gonna stop your Nessus or you actually communicating using SMB, the reason that's happening is because Microsoft have put in a security feature to make sure you can't just talk over SMB by default. So this is a registry key setting, and that can be found in HKey Local Machine, Software, Microsoft Windows, Current Version, Policies, System, and Local Account Token Filter Policy. So this is this isn't actually there by default. You're gonna to have to go ahead and create a new D word 32 bit of a value of one um, with name local account total filter policy. So if I just change that to one and then go back, you'll now see that the permissions have changed from nothing to read, write, read, write, and you'll see that we've now got a pwn symbol there which we didn't have before. So we've got basically a full administrator on this machine which is what you want as a uh, internal infrastructure assessment. So that's how I troubleshoot using it, using it for internal infrastructure. Now let's talk about kind of more red teamy type scenario tests where you might use this. So if I clear this off, there's a few things or a few uh, flags that you're gonna wanna know about for this tool. So one example of that would be um, logged on users. So. Before using this, you might have a, uh, a standard account through some other method of hacking. You might have a local administrator account, uh, whatever account it is, you plug that into here. And the first thing I do is spray this on machines for logged on users. What that's gonna do is show you the logged on users on that Windows machine. So if I spray this across the network for various Windows machines, you're gonna have a whole list of all the different users logged on those machines. Now, why that's useful is, <clears throat> excuse me, get a coffee. Why that's useful is because if it's a domain administrator, 
that's logged onto that machine, there's a possibility that their password might actually be stored in the LSA cache. So the LSA cache is uh, basically a password store that's used for different password events uh, within Windows. So what you can do is add the LSA flag and that's gonna query that on the machine. In this scenario, it's not gonna dump it because of the way I have the Windows 10 machine set up. Um, but in a typical scenario, you're not gonna have just these machine hashes. You're also gonna have El Jefe under there with a password hash or even a clear text password. So that's one example. Um, another example of something you might wanna do is instead of LSA, if you put SAM in there, that's gonna query the SAM database in the Windows 10 host. Uh, and what that is, it stores all of the local accounts uh, and their password hashes. So by running that, you get all of the local accounts and their password hashes. So that includes me and it includes the local administrator on that machine. Uh, and why this is good is because typically um, environments, they don't change local administrator password on all of their machines. So if, usually if you find this one administrator password, uh, sorry, hash, and you manage to crack that, well, you can use that in pretty much any Windows machine because people don't change it. Uh, don't get me wrong, there are some people that do, but typically you don't find it. Um, what's next? So, uh, and should I also say, using this hash, sometimes you can actually log in to um, a Windows machine using that hash. So actually, you don't even need to crack the password um, just because of the way Windows works. I haven't actually tried it on this machine, so um, let's give it a go, actually, while we're here. So it's, the user's now gonna be uh, administrator. <clears throat> and the hash, you wanna put a capital H, I believe. Put the uh, quote marks, pop that hash in, and we'll hope that it's gonna work. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, so that didn't work because the account's disabled. So I don't think this is gonna work, but I'll try El Jefe's hash anyway, even though we've got the password for it. Oh. It would help if I actually change the username back to myself. Okay, so you can see now that we've actually used the El Jefe account with a hash. So rather than using El Jefe and the password, which we have here, we've actually used El Jefe and the password hash. So you don't even need to crack the password. You can just simply pass the hash to the machine and it will log you in. See, that is very powerful, especially if you've got an administrator user, because that will allow you to do so much more in that machine and go way further and probably get you a domain administrator account. Very powerful. Um, the last thing I want to show you, or should I say the, the second to last thing, is pass poll. So if I go back to here, if you type in pass poll, that's going to give you the password policy typically for the domain. Um, and using this, you can get a lot more accounts. So this, this requires a bit of brute force. So you, you'll see here how long it will take to lock out an account. So say if an account will lock out after four wrong password attempts, do three wrong password attempts or try three passwords on various different users. So if you know that uh, the domain's user name um, are typically, you know, first name dot last name, for an example, go on LinkedIn, find a load of different users that could be, and then just try them. Try three passwords. Don't do the fourth password because that's gonna lock the account out. That's gonna get you found out. Try three passwords. So password one, two, three, you know, welcome one, two, three, simple things like that. You're gonna find some account, I can guarantee it. Um, and then finally, I just wanna go back to shares. So I talked about why I use that for um, internal infrastructure. Now, the reason I use this when it comes to kind of red team scenarios is because you know if you spray that across the network with when you gain a local administrator or a domain administrator you're probably going to be able to <clears throat> find 
so many file shares and in those file shares you're going to find sensitive data so using the shares option is very important because you spray that across the network you're going to find shares like hr data financial director you know ceo stuff very good option um, i think that's kind of everything that i want to show you uh, wrap this up nicely um, any questions put it in the comments and i'll try and answer them but yeah great tool thanks for watching guys